My favorite part of the creative process is definitely the songwriting. I've been the only black woman in the room from a very early age. I do find myself having anxiety about it. As much change as we're seeing, there's still so much work to be done. I'm Mickey Guyton, and country music also looks like me. So I was at a Texas Rangers baseball game when I was a little girl. The announcer said, please rise. This 10-year-old Leanne Rhymes sings a national anthem. The voice that came out of this girl, and she sounded like a grown woman to us at the time. And you could hear a pin drop in the stadium. And that was when I knew I wanted to be a singer. It wasn't until I moved to Nashville that songwriting really became a huge part of my life. That was when I really honed in on my writing skills. I remember when I first was pursuing country music, there was a meeting I took at a record label. And sitting there, I could tell one of the label heads was questioning me and my authenticity and like grilling me on country music and if I knew it or not. I truly listened to country music growing up. And I grew up in the South on gravel dirt roads. Like, shouldn't that be enough? I was being told, make sure your song sounds really, really country, because people aren't going to think you're authentic. And in the same breath, I was literally listening to songs that were number one in country radio with trap beats and R&B melodies, and these artists admitting that they were inspired by R&B songs. Country music and gospel and R&B, they have a way closer relationship than people think. I mean, the banjo came from Africa. And when you go to the Country Music Hall of Fame and you really look at the history of country music, some of the first things you see are black people on their porch picking and clapping and dancing. I've been the only black woman a lot my whole life. You know, I did sing at, at concerts in front of Confederate flags and that was something that was, it was hard. I was doing an after show signing and I went to hug this kid who had Down syndrome. And as I was going to hug him, somebody walked by and said, everybody's waiting for the N-word. And I remember everybody in the line, like turning around mortified, but nobody stood up for me. I've had a really, really successful career and I've kept being able to press forward even when the odds were stacked against me. It's been amazing and it's just a testimony that you have to stand up for what you believe in, not only personally, but as an artist. And I even called my team and I called my label. I said, I have learned to be comfortable in rooms full of people that don't look like me. And now it is your turn to learn to become comfortable in being in rooms of people that don't look like you. I realized that it was not enough to just see one black person every 15 to 25, 30 years make it. You need to see a sea of people of color, black people make it in this industry. That is how you truly find change. This is something that God put on my heart to really stand up and be a voice for the voiceless. As much change as we're seeing come forward, there's still so much work to be done. And it's a lot of weight to put on your shoulders, especially when you just wanna sing country music and put out cool songs like everybody else.